Hello and welcome to another episode. So today we're going to be doing something very interesting. So we'll try to decode what migratory motor complexes. So why are you doing this would be a question. That is exactly why you need to know the clinical significance of this. You see all these diseases over here. So in all these disease state, your migratory motor complex differs. Okay, and some of the problems with migratory motor complex by itself can result in a few of these things. Okay, so let's try to understand what migratory motor complex is. So you can see over here, this is after feeding. And after feeding, you can see the pattern which is there, the basal electrical rhythm, slow wave, spike potential. So that will result in your peristalsis, segmentation. Okay, so that is the activity that you see over here. Okay, so that is the fed state. But apart from the fed state, in the fasting state, you can see over here, that is when your migratory motor complex is there. So this, you can see, has a physical variation. Okay, so this is called housekeeper. Migratory motor complex is called the housekeeper of the GIT. So what it does is, before feeding, okay, and after feeding, to make sure that before the next feed, the contents of the luminal contents are evacuated. So it's like sweeps them away, the previous old things, so that you can make space for new ones. So that's why it's called the housekeeper of the GIT. Now, if you take a look specifically at your migratory motor complex, it has different phases. So the basal state, the most majority of it is your phase one. It is a quiescent phase, not much activity is there. Okay, then comes a phase two, where irregular bursts of activity are seen. Phase three, regular bursts of activity can be seen. And there is what is called a phase four. Okay, some textbooks mention that, some textbooks don't. So phase four is generally the short duration uh, that is basically the transition between the phase three to the next phase one. Okay. So when you see this, this happens cyclically in phasic manners and from one phase three to the beginning of the next phase three, this cyclical variation as I was mentioning takes around 90 to 120 minutes on an average. Okay, so this activity moves, the phase three that we're talking about moves from your stomach to distal ilium till distal it does not go all the way to your uh, large intestine so there there are different mechanisms for movement okay so this goes till the distal ilium and at an average speed of 5 cm per minute so you can see this again we have the phase 1 2 3 4 and phase 1 takes around 30 to 60 minute okay out of the 90 to 120 minute the cycle between them so th uh, phase one takes around 36 cement but uh, i'm not too happy about these uh, values that were given this was uh, taken from a journal but as i read a lot of articles what i understood is these vary a lot so especially migrating motor complex all these phases uh, it's not only in your stomach is also there in the duodenum, jejunum, ileum. So all of this in different parts are phases, the duration, the velocity, all this varies a lot. Okay. So for example, in your antral, in the uh, stomach, the phase one is only 50%. If you take a look at your uh, intestine, it comes to around 80%. So you can see that there's a difference. So don't, you know, um, study these values per se just because I put it up okay so this is just for some sort of a reference so after phase one comes your phase two okay so based on this what you understand is the maximum time is for phase one and then phase two here 20 to 40 minutes also note bile secretion is during your phase two questions are asked from that like that then comes your phase three that is around uh, 10 to 20 minutes Okay, so when we talk in detail about phase three, it is most commonly in the antrum. Okay, so for its definition to call it phase three, uh, it has to be at least two minutes. It has to have a frequency of two to three contractions per minute. 
and on an average it has a amplitude of 75 millimeter mercury that is quite a lot uh, phase 3 can also start in the diode node okay so for that the definition would be at least 3 minutes and here the frequency is 11 to 12 contractions per minute and on an average the amplitude is 33 millimeter of mercury okay so here you can see that this phase tree generally moves 6 to 10 centimeter per minute wait 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 so earlier it said 5 centimeter per minute so they are actually talking more about your antral one and as you keep going down the uh, speed actually velocity actually decreases so that is why on an average taking the whole thing it comes to 5 centimeter per minute okay so then after that after phase 3 comes your phase 4 which takes around 0 to 5 minute where transitions from your phase 3 to phase 1 so now that all these basic things are covered let's come to the interesting part so we have the antral as well as the duodenal one antral 75 percentage starts in the stomach okay uh, there are also variations in different articles so the, some have uh, told 71 percentage in the stomach, some 78 percentage. So on an average, it's been like around 75 percentage, okay, and 25 percentage in the duodenum and proximal jejunum. So there are factors which affect govern this phase three uh, migratory motor complex in the antrum and the duodenum separately. Okay, vagus is very important for your antrum. Okay, also 5HT3 and 4 hydroxy tryptamine okay three and four receptors are seen in the antral as well as motilin so vagus motilin and your hydroxy tryptamine are playing a major role in your antral mmc phase three also some studies have shown ghrelin to be playing a role ghrelin has some 21 percentage homology to your motilin so this is known to act in a similar way so in fact uh, people initially thought ghrelin was the uh, thing that is needed for your whole MMC to take place but later it was discovered that motilin actually plays a role because ghrelin is not taking part in that whole cyclical phasic changes are not seen okay when given from outside yes it's happening but in the cyclical thing inside the body motilin is playing a role okay also human studies are not showing much of uh, effect of ghrelin okay in uh, lower animals uh, rats and all ghrelin has been seen to uh, play a role okay also erythromycin also ha uh, acts in a similar way as motil okay so all these affect your antral phase 3 duodenal is not uh, just uh, 5 ht 3 4 here it's 5 ht 4 Okay, 5-hydroxytryptamine and these receptors are more seen in the intrinsic primary efferents of your enteric nervous system. Okay, so serotonin and 5-hydroxytryptamine are related. Okay, so serotonin as well as somatostatin. So these are things that affect, stimulate your duodenal phase 3. As we had seen earlier, you ingest food that stops the MMC and starts the fed pattern okay so distension of stomach is something that inhibits your phase 3 in your stomach as well as the upper intestine stomach as well as upper intestine while presence of fluid nutrients in the small intestine that will inhibit your duodenal jejunal okay and the ileal so the entire intestinal mmc is inhibited so this too means that there is food Okay, when there is no food, only in the fasting is when MMC is there. Keep that in mind. So you can notice that vagus is playing a role in antral, but not in the duodenal. Okay, so this is important when you talk about stress. So earlier I told you, showed you a lot of diseases, and that stress is playing a major role in IBS and all that. Okay, so in stress the vagal activity is decreased that is why phase 3 gets de decreased especially this effect is seen in antrum not in the duodenum okay so in the duodenal and jejunal mucosa we have m cells 
okay this is not there in stomach not there in colon not there in rectum so they are in duodenal and jejunal mucosa okay please have that in mind so non vagal cholinergics are postulated to be how this m cells are stimulated okay studies were done where vagotomy and all that were were done but uh, you know m cells were still stimulated so most likely it could be because of some non vagal cholinergic factor okay uh, also in the interdigestive phase the luminal acidification so interdigestive fasting means the luminal part gets acidified right so that along with bile so bile is something that happens during phase 2 if you remember okay phase 2 of mmc so that phase 2 bile also stimulates the release of m cells uh, motilin from m cells okay now comes a very interesting part phase 3 mmc by itself stimulates the release of motilin from m cells okay also m cells release motilin and motilin induces phase 3 okay so just come back to it again phase 3 by itself stimulates m cells m cells release motilin so now comes a question the chicken or the egg which came first is motilin the main thing resulting in phase 3 mmc or is phase 3 releasing motilin to result in a feedback mechanism so we'll get to understanding that now okay so before that an interesting concept this motilin induced phase 3 uh mmc which is there in the antrum is known to be what results in your hunger sensation the hunger pang that you feel okay so before i go on to explain these things just have in mind right now we do not have enough data studies have been done but nothing confirmed yet there are a few theories okay so this vasovagal reflex is what is most commonly accepted there are other theories so i just briefly explain them so that you understand the concept and where we are research wise okay so we have your motilin okay so motilin is not here duodenum and jejunum the m cells okay that stimulates the enterochromaffin cells not ecl cell enterochromaffin okay so these enterochromaffin cells release your hydroxytryptamine the 5 hydroxy tryptamine is going to act on its receptor which is in the vagal efferens so this goes to your nucleus tracta solitarius from where it is going to go to your dorsal motor vagal nucleus and that will result in the vagal efferent through acetylcholine will stimulate okay we're not talking about uh, m cells anymore we're talking about inducing the phase 3 So acetylcholine is involved there. This is part of the enteric system that is there. So there acetylcholine is involved. What I was talking about earlier was the release of motilin by the M cells. That is uh, some non-vagal cholinergic. Okay. So this is most commonly what is accepted right now. This is the vagal-vagal reflex. Okay. So motilin stimulates 5-HT from EC cells, which will stimulate the vagal efferent. then vagal efferent and acetylcholine so keep in mind if the motilin is not there the whole process can still go on 5ht can still activate the vagal efferent dorsal motor vagal nucleus vagal efferent acetylcholine this can still happen okay so motilin is just something extra that keeps this going on okay now there's another theory some will call it o he proposed that uh, you know, even for this, this none of this is simply said they did many experiments where they cut different parts injected stuff phhd into different areas in the blood stream into the luminal surface and lot of experiments were done and you know most likely this is what is happening is what they understood from this okay so this person he proposed that you know motilin can actually cross the blood okay and through blood circulation can directly go to a circumventricular area called the area postrema which has your 5 hydroxy tryptamine neurons and that can directly act on the uh, dorsal vagal complex and your vagal efferent sorry efferent is going to 
act through acetylcholine again resulting in phase 3. But the problem with this right now is uh, the motilin receptor. So for motilin to act here, motilin receptor should be found here. So that has not been demonstrated yet. So right now nothing is for sure. Okay. So that is another thing. So in case in the future something comes up, please do let me know in the comment section. Okay. So coming back to your whole cyclical phasic changes. Based on whatever we learned so far, we'll try to understand how your MMC uh, occurs in your cyclical fashion. So it starts off with your luminal 5-hydroxytryptamine. So right now we understood that motilin is not the most important one. It is important in feedback. Okay. The luminal 5-HT is what starts the process. That is in duodenal phase 2. Okay. So the luminal 5-HT is in duodenal phase 2 and that in turn results in activation of the vagal. So luminal 5-HT through the vagal efferent and all that will activate the vagus and through activation of your enteric system gastric phase 3 is activated. Gastric phase 3 after that will be followed by your duodenal phase 3. And once gastric phase 3 is activated that releases motilin. Motilin again activates the 5-HT either through the circulation or your vagal efferent. Finally through the vagus it again there is a positive feedback over here. Also remember during the phase 3 bile secretion is there, bile uh, secretion is also there. So that also plays a role in this. Okay. So that is what we know so far and this is how you know automatically it goes to phase 1 from once 5-HT is released it goes to phase 2 then through the vagus phase 3 gastric is there Journal phase 3 is there, motile indices in the positive feedback and the soul cycle goes on. But, you know, regulation is there. So, your basic enteric nervous system is playing a role. You can see this vagus is the center of it all. Okay. And there is an internal clock which times all this. And that is with the help of your 5-HT, motilin and all that. Okay. But now the question comes. What about termination? If this is a cyclical thing, it should end at some point, right? So that is why we're not entirely clear. Okay, so some articles have suggested certain things, okay, postulated. But uh, I tried reading through it and, you know, not much data has been given, research data has been given. So I'm not convinced yet in order to, you know, put it out in this channel and uh, in this lecture. So we just keep it there. We are not really sure about how termination happens. Okay. In case in the future when you are watching this, this has already been discovered. Please make sure to put it out in the comment section. Okay. So again, just to have a little more clarity of the concept that we gathered so far, we will try to understand this again. Okay. So we have the slow way. So we have the smooth muscles in the GIT slow wave complexes are there okay this is how it looks and you know from the dorsal vagal motor nucleus enteric nervous system activated that results in spike potential that regulation results in spike potential this is how spike potential is there okay so this is in phase one only slow wave is there so that is why no contractions are seen in phase one by the time phase two comes you can see irregular bursts like this irregular bursts of spike potential are seen okay and that will lead to some sort of contractions okay now in phase three there is whole positive feedback which keeps this going so that you can see a regular burst of activity okay so that is your migratory motor complex so now let's take a look at a few of these diseases which are associated with this Okay, so if MMC is faulty, some irregularity is there, the most important problem is your bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine. So this housekeeper, if it's not there, you know, your house gets very dirty. So bacterial overgrowth is a problem that is there. Again, in aging, the propagation velocity of phase 3 is lesser. I told you stress is very important. Okay, so that affects your antel part more. 
So in IBS, you can see shorter interval between consecutive migratory motor complex. Functional dyspepsia are the postprandial. Dyspeptic sy symptoms are much more. Okay. Now anorexia nervosa, fewer phase three contractions are there. Even absent MMC is there. But uh, it has been shown that you know it is uh, not a permanent thing. It is reversible. Obesity, diabetes mellitus, gastroparesis. So in obesity, I told you this is involved motilin due phase three is involved in hunger pangs and all that. So in obesity, that hunger sensation control and all that is affected. Okay, so that another line of new research possibilities are there over there and of course other things like chagas disease uh, intestinal pseudo obstruction so you can see how important it is to understand what migratory motor complex is so that you can find treatment for these diseases okay. so these are the various beautiful uh, journals and articles i gone through okay you can see this person evelyn uh, Deleuze and Jantag, I think uh, they must have played a major role in finding out a lot of things and done a lot of research regarding this. And this is also a very important journal and uh, of course from uh, Boron as well. Okay, so it might be a little complicated if you try to read it, but you know, if you have the time for it, give it a go. I summarized it all, but I haven't covered everything which is given in that. So, actually an uh, interesting read if you're into all that okay so i hope this was helpful thank you